Hey everyone and welcome to this tutorial. Today we take an in-depth look at the world composition and how this actually works. So let's go ahead and open our 4.7 project or engine and then create a new project. Click on new project and let's create a third person character and let's call this world comp. And we want to have starter content enabled. So create this. Here we are inside our game. So um, Let's actually, oh, here's my level, so I removed this. So this is the screen you should get. So let's create a new folder called map. And then let's create a new level, default level, without the floor and without the player start. And we save this as our world map. So call this world and make sure to put it inside the new map folder, like this. And once we did this one, um, we will enable now um, the actual world composition and this is just under world settings with these enabled. And this is everything. So we save this up and this window that you saw at the beginning is the window we need now. So go on to window and click on levels to open this here up. It should be somewhere here for you, but I just moved it here to the side. Yeah, this is our world composition window where we can um, control everything. So here's a, lay, a layout from um, all the levels. And as you can see at the moment, we have the world as the persistent level. And here also stands persistent level. So we save this up. And all we now do is we work with this window to create new levels. So click here on level and click on new level. And we put it in into this map and we can also create a new folder called subfolder and inside the subfolder we will create this new map. And as you can see this map is grayed out. This means it's not loaded at the moment. So we can load this now and then make it current. So as you can see here it changes to a new map and now we can or everything we make in this new map will only be saved into this level. But um, because a uh, world composition is enabled, all the levels that are connected to the position level will be shown in here. So this means we can create here a landscape, something like 127 quads here is okay. So we can um, create this landscape here. And as um, this is now assigned to the new map, we can make the new map invisible and this landscape connected to the new map will disappear. So yeah, this is very cool and easy. So let me just speed this up here a bit so we can work on this. And yeah, you need to save this of course. And then if you want to unload it, just click on unload and we have only the world map persistent loaded. So yeah, this helps um, to work on multiple levels at times so you can unload all the other maps and just work on one map at a time. So um, now we um, actually want to sculpt on this level and the only correct way to do this to go over edges is um, a simple way that is just by clicking here on the summon walls composition would open up a minimap here for us and working with this minimap. So don't ever create a new level here. Um, because if you create here a new level, you can't uh, work on both landscapes at one time. So let me fast introduce you to this minimap here. So we have here an overall look of our map or world. And if I scroll out here, you can see um, some orange boundings. And yeah, this is the actual max size of Unreal Engine. And as you can see, this is here 10 to this and at the whole x axis is 20 kilometers and this is quite very big. So no game in the world at the moment has a world that is so big. So um, yeah, but uh, uh, we will focus here on the smaller map. Um, so as you can see, this small arrow here indicates ourselves. So we can move here through the level and um, these uh, orange is the current um, landscape. So to actually get a new landscape now, all you have to do is make a whoops, right click on this landscape and add an adjustment layer to the right. And let's call it new map one. 
and as you can see it spawned us a new layer a landscape here and we can just move it by uh, moving it to this position so yeah this is how this works and the magic trick here is now um, we can actually sculpt on both at one time and that's pretty cool so we don't have to um, actually uh, paint at one and then try to make it perfectly align here together so we can just paint on both at one time so yeah and let me show you a bit about world composition which is very cool so if we go in here you can see uh, this is no real mountain so let's create here some mountains or some some height mountains so as you can see um, these are good quality for now so if I go back now and this is the good part about world composition you can see they're going down so it's actually um, unloading the whole um, vertices and um, saving us some RAM so we can build even uh, bigger maps so this is pretty cool and this works also for the trees and all the other stuff so um, yeah so this is one advantage of world composition so to show you a bit more which would be a streaming distance I would uh, like to create some more maps here and I think I go with 4x4 four four. so I will just create here down 4 and to the right 4 and yeah I will do this um, uh, while I pause the video so um, yeah so here I am I'm finished and created 4x4s four here and now what we could do is just select all at once like this or we can select all except the top left and just pull it into this so if we now move this one it will move all the others but actually I don't like this so much so I will link all these and then I will just uh, clear parent link and yeah this is better so now I see exactly the middle and yeah we have here some overlapping um, so on the edges they're a bit overlapping but that's okay so if we have this now um, breaking let me just paint a bit more here and then show you how the streaming uh, stuff also works so um, at the moment I just showed you um, that there is uh, something called uh, the world composition and the threshold and it's um, minimizing the vertices when we are far away but there's also something that is called the streaming distance which allows us to actually only load um, certain uh, tiles of this landscape so uh, let me show you quite quick with this so as we can see this mountain there if we play now from here we see it disappears and this is due to the streaming distance which is set at the moment to 15 so we can um, if you like uh, change it so let's go to this minimap again here and as you can see here at the top are some layers and there it stands streaming distance 50,000 so let's create a new layer my layer let's add it to 200,000 for example and then we need to click on all these uh, maps right clicking and assign them to this new layer so now they're in the my layer and if I play again from here um, we would actually see um, 50 times more into the um, yeah into the front so to actually have a better understanding of this let's make our third person character a bit faster so let's get the walk speed here uh, 600 to 6000 like this compile and save so um, at the moment 200,000 is not enough so let's uh, actually create one more with 500,000 and call this two and let's just move them all into this layer too so now if you play from here 
we can see this already. So uh, let me get a bit near to it. And I think you will uh, see. Or oh, let's um, move then again to uh, the My Layer and play from here so you can le uh, see how streaming distance works. So if I run now to these mountains there, they should spawn. When we get to 200,000 pixels near this uh, mountain. So, um, yes, yeah, you can see uh, the background, this one disappeared already. So, and in a few seconds, here should the mountain appear. Oh, we're not fast enough, I think. So, maybe, oh, okay. I was here, so play from here again, and I was almost there. So let me just run a bit more into this direction, and in a few seconds you will see how just a mountain appears. And uh, the problem is at this, I think I'm messed up with uh, the uh, streaming distance. Yeah, it's twenty thousand, and this is my bad. I wanted to do two hundred thousand, so. Um, Let's scroll out here. Oh, let's get 200 and 300,000. Just call it like you want. And let's move this into the 313. So now it should work better. So we go here, play from here, and yeah, everything is to see. Very cool. And yeah, this is how streaming distance works. And to actually um, not uh, popping, uh, letting this popping up like uh, we did here, um, we could add some atmospheric fog. And this is what we do. Let me just simply test this again. And yeah, now it appears a bit um, faster. And yeah, let's uh, save everything up here. Of course, stop the game. Go back to your object mode and let's um, actually work here on the level. So let's go to the persistent level and let's see what we got here. So uh, I think we missed the skylight, so let's import it somewhere in the air. Make it movable, of course, and make it. No, let's do it a bit higher and let's make it a specified cube map. Then go into this cube map, click on view option, open the engine and take this daylight. So this gives us a better looking uh, world. We can now put the intensity bit down and then we are ready with the skylight and we can work on this atmospheric fog. So um, here are some values we will work on. So first we will take the ground offset. Uh, to the highest number that is possible. So let's just increase this to 200 or 2 million. Um, yeah, you can work with this value like you want, but uh, I will work with this. So the whole world is covered by a fog, but we will increase the start distance of this fog. So um, at the moment, let's just test this with 70,000 like this. And then what we do is we add a fog multiplier. So um, in the distance, there's uh, the things are not correctly seen. So um, yeah, like this. So you, now you can see this better. Let me just go back to the fog again. And I think 10 or 20 was good. Yeah, 20 is good. And we can also play with these values here, but it's not necessary. You can increase the sun multiplier, so uh, how the sun reflects on this fog. We'll just decrease this a bit, I think 0.8 is okay. And then we can just pull the uh, start distance again. So let's start from here somewhere. And let's make this 100,000. And yeah, you can play with all these value. Um, I don't think this is necessary at all. 
let's just um, make the brightness a bit higher maybe. No, this is not changing anything. Let's see for the color. Also not changing anything. So yeah, uh, these are the values which uh, you can change. So play with this one. And as you can see, I think this is quite good here. So we are here. And if I'm running now to this um, distant mountain there, we will see it appears inside the fox somewhere. So let me just grab go here a bit further. As you can see, it already appeared there. If I'm running back somewhere, it just disappears. And yeah, that's quite cool. And that's everything about uh, world composition. So um, yeah, actually, uh, this is everything for this video. And in the next video, I will show you how you can actually import uh, tiled maps. So we have more tiling here. And um, then maybe I do another video where we will, or where I show you how you can create your own hate map and uh, import it. And of course, show you how you can create um, real world places inside Unreal Engine. So yeah, this is the plan for the next few videos. Of course, I'm currently um, also working on the Battle Royale series and uh, we will also start with this again, with an inventory and with pickups and all the stuff. So, yeah, uh, this will take some uh, weeks to get done. But for now, I think this is pretty cool and works good. So, um, yeah, thanks for watching and uh, have a nice day. Bye.